Good morning and welcome back to the Camilla Tomley Show. I'm not Camilla, I'm Christopher Hope. But I'm glad to say I'm now joined in the studio by academic and pollster Professor Matthew Goodwin. Matthew's with us to talk about his new book, Values, Voice and Virtue, which was, re- was re- released last week to some, well, some reaction. <laughs> Before we go to the reaction, Matthew, what's the book about? Well, uh, the book is about the rise of a new elite in British politics, which is gradually losing touch with the country. I point to the a left-leaning group uh, who tend to disproportionately dominate the media, the cultural institutions, creative industries, also politics. It's not just about people on the left or in the Labour Party. This new elite are also visible within parts of the Conservative Party. I think many people who are watching this show will be perhaps uh, uh, already aware of of this group, what they think, and and I just put it out there. I said this group's losing touch with the country. Could you find the ideal the the person that you're describing? How old are they? Where do they go to university? How do they vote in the referendums, elections? Yeah. How are they? Who are yeah, they? So the interesting are they white? Are they male? Yeah, the interesting female? thing about, about this group is, you know, they often went to Oxbridge or Russell Group University. They tend to lean very left on issues like immigration. They wanted to remain in the EU. They really hate Brexit. Um, they're very proud of their liberal identity. They've become much more liberal over the last decade. They absolutely hate Boris Johnson. They live in the cities, the university towns, and they increasingly look down on other people in society. They increasingly identify themselves as the winners, the morally righteous, radically progressive um, luxury belief class. And they derive status from projecting their sense of moral Mm. righteousness. And your point in the book, I think, is that they advocate for things that don't affect them. These are free hits, so maybe immigration won't affect uh, their wages because their wages aren't affected by more people coming to the country. You know, the interesting thing, Chris, is the new elite has spent 20 years advocating policy that bring them status and aren't really costly for them, but which impose big costs on other people. Mass immigration would be one. Hyper-globalization would be another. Let's hollow out the economy. Let's turn Britain into an economy that's dependent upon mass migration and consumption. And, of course, they're the winners. They're in the cities. They've got the the money. They've got the the, the big housing um, uh, increases in the housing prices and so on. So they don't need to worry about the effects of this. And we now see this with sex, with gender, with history. They... They advocate a very negative view of who we are, of British history and identity, whereas lots of voters out there, Chris, really care about their national identity. They care about their national history. And so the new elite now today is also really stripping away something that gives people a lot of status, a lot of recognition. And that's why I I argue this group is really now um, reflecting what another academic, Rob Henderson, has called the luxury belief class. They get Mm. a sense of righteousness and status by sitting on Twitter every day. They're much more likely to use Twitter. Too much on Twitter. They spend all their time on Twitter, either abusing or, or criticising people that don't share their beliefs or projecting their beliefs you, to others to win status. Who are these people? You wrote a piece in the, in the Times, which <laughs> yeah, is the right. paper of the establishment. Yeah. They published it. There was some reaction to that. Yeah, I've had a strange week on, uh, on, on social media, Chris. Um, I found myself being um, widely criticised by members of the new elite. I right. mean, I had uh, oh, Mehdi Hassan private school, Oxford, I had James O'Brien, private school, LSE, I had David Aronovich, went to Oxford, John Paul Tez went to Oxford. Um, They sort of lined up one by one to deny they were part of this new elite and to to deny it even exists. Um, but, But what they exhibited, Chris, this is important, is another key feature of the new elite, political intolerance. All the evidence shows that members of the new elite are the most likely to unfriend people who hold views they disagree with, block them on social media and Twitter, to feel very worried if their son or their daughter marries somebody across the political divide. God forbid their child marries a Brexiteer. God forbid their child marries a Conservative. And they are consistently not only the most likely to only associate, socialise and marry members of their own group, but they are the most likely, Chris, to express political intolerance. So while they say they're liberal, they say they're enlightened. Often, when it comes to politics, they are among the most illiberal. Is it possible we're overblowing this, that in a sense these are people who are noisy on Twitter, they've got opinions, that's what Twitter is for, but the real elite are nowhere near Twitter. These are very rich people who, who are very well off, they get, they get government contracts, they benefit mm-hmm. financially from their friends in government. Shouldn't we go after them rather than noisy people on Twitter? There is an old elite. Uh, nobody's ever said yeah. there isn't. And I talk about this in the book. I say there is a, a sort of merchant elite, a conservative elite. You can see it in the donor class, in the conservative party, in the city. You can see it the business CEOs. There is an old elite, Chris. But what I'm arguing in this book is that today the axis of power is tilting. It is tilting away from that old elite, which, by the way, used to be 
economically adrift from everybody, but culturally tended to share the same values as many voters. Today's new elite is different. Economically, politically, yeah. culturally, they are drifting is it real away power, though? from other people. Is it real power or just influence? Because they're, they're, they're different, aren't they? Influence is this dreadful term to describe people who are busy on social media, but power is something completely different. Well, I, I'm not only talking about social media, yeah. Chris. I'm talking about people who disproportionately dominate... On policy um, level. Media, civil service, okay. uh, creative industries, cultural institutions, cultural power, political power, um, not just economic power. And this is one of the key arguments that I think people have missed. Anybody watching this show who went through the last 10 years, maybe they voted Conservative, maybe they voted for Brexit, maybe they voted for Boris Johnson, have probably spent much of that time looking at okay. the BBC debates, the newspapers, the adverts on television, the films, um, the books on the bestseller list, etc., etc., and they probably just felt, my values are not reflected in this national conversation. And even worse, I can't really say what I want to say within this conversation because then I'm called a racist, a gammon, an ignorant, bigot, mm -hmm. etc., etc. And I think this is the issue, Chris. We, we are talking about a national conversation which over the last 20, 30 years has become incredibly narrow so that it only really reflects reflects the values and the voice of this new elite. And what I'm saying in this book, right, the reason yeah. why I'm talking to all media, why I think GB News and uh, all new, new, media, new media are important is because we need to diversify the national conversation. We need to have a much How do you wide, do that, Matthew? Well, number one, we need to say to media, it's not on that almost every single columnist comes from the same background, the same schools, the same universities, the same, and holds the same set of values. We need a much wider range of voices but in our, in our, in our media. But their readers won't Don't their readers of the newspapers want to see what they're well, reading? Well, why are so many people leaving like Legacy media, Chris. Mm. Why, you know, the, view, the listener figures on Radio <laughs> 4 today are down massively. Why is that? The BBC, well, levels, of, down. Le levels of trust in BBC are down. So newspaper readership is down. I think actually this is part of this problem, you know, that people are looking at politics, the national conversation, the public square, and they're just saying people like me aren't even in mm. this national conversation. Someone like you, though, you're, you're, you're a professor of politics at the University of Kent. But you went to Salford University, you educated sure. in Canada as well. Are you yeah. part of the elite yourself or not? I mean, I'm certainly more part of the elite than lots of people. I mean, I would also say I was the first person in my family to go to university and I didn't go to the Oxbridge or Russell Group universities. But I certainly hold my hands up and say I'm more of an, part of an elite than lots of people. But I think what's interesting, Chris, is... The new elite are very bad at holding the mirror up to themselves. And all I'm saying is... they hate is, it, is it? They hate... No, they hate, absolutely hate it. And now I'm persona non grata <laughs> because I've sort of held the mirror up. But it's an important thing to do. Because if you want to understand how British politics got here, the rise of populism, Brexit, mm. Boris Johnson, we have to understand how this group lost touch with the country. Mass immigration, hyper-globalisation, the hollowing out of our democracy. Very few people wanted these things to happen. The new elite did, many other people did. And there's clearly an audience out there because it's riding high in the Sunday Times bestseller charts today. But, but not only this book, Chris, right? The last month, think of Hannah Barnes and her book on the Tavistock Clinic saying something went fundamentally mm. wrong here in what we're doing to kids. Nigel Bigger's book on Empire saying actually mm. British history isn't just negative and toxic. Mm. And now my book calling out the new elite. Now I'm going to make one suggestion, Chris. Maybe the publishing industry has got this wrong. Maybe there is enormous appetite out yes. there for people who offer something different. Countercultural Well, takes. Mark Francois self-published his book on, on Brexit, which he'll tell you was because he couldn't get a publisher from the Remainer establishment. There we go. On that note, well, Matthew, Matthew Goodwin, thank you for joining us uh, this week on, on, uh, on, on uh, Community Families Programme. Great to have you on.